Hello! Thank you again for joining me today in Anabes Kitchen. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Subscribe so you can help us grow this beautiful channel where we cook classic African dishes with a healthy twist each time. On today's menu is Brodongo, which is overripe plantain dish from Cape Coast um, in Ghana. So Brodongo to the Fantis means literally translated is bread, which is the broda part, and then the ingo is palm nut oil. A healthy twist today is eliminating the palm nut oil. Now the palm nut oil, yes, it makes it authentic because it's a spiced oil, it's delicious. However, we are eliminating that and we are rather going to incorporate this wahio pepper. And let me tell you something, the wahio pepper is zero calories, great nutrients, and the flavor it brings to the plate is phenomenal. Let's quickly go over our ingredients. We're going to use this big red bell pepper here, some scallion onions, our main ingredient over ripened plantain, and then we also have two shallot onions, ginger, our wahio peppers, and then we also have huintia. And huintia is um, known as negro peppers. If you go to the African market, you can find it your local African market. So we need three close of that. And then we also need, this is cornmeal, white cornmeal. You can use the yellow kind if you have it. We need a cup of that. And then we need a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of baking powder. And we are ready to get started. Let's begin by prepping our ingredients. Now let's talk a little bit about quintia, which is also known as negro peppers or grains of psyllium. It is a spice that's widely used in West Africa to bring warmth to a dish. You know, it does something similar to what, for instance, uh, cinnamon would do for banana nut bread. Okay, and although it's a spice, it does not have heat. So it will bring that satisfying warmth without the heat. And it's just delicious. And it smells amazing. The scallions and bell peppers is optional, but I love the texture it brings to the dish. The next thing we're going to do is to grind our over-ripened plantain into a chunky consistency. And we're going to be using our local food processor the Asanka and Tapuli to achieve that. So what you do is you make a pick slit on the side and remove the peel and just go in the Asanka just like that. I grind a couple at a time. Now I realize not everybody has a sanka and tapuli in their homes. So it is totally fine to substitute this uh, tool with um, your food processor. Your electric food processor will work just fine. Okay, just use the pulse function on the food processor to achieve that chunkiness. The chunkiness is important because it makes it fun. It, you know, you don't want it to be too smooth. You want to be able to see when you cut into it, you want to be able to see that texture happening. It makes it beautiful. And here is a chunkiness I'm referring to. It will make for a lovely final product. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to blend this combination of ingredients here into a smooth puree in our blender. So that is our huentia. Okay, three cloves of huentia. And then our ginger, our shallot onions, and our wahio peppers. And once blended, you'll see that the color is almost like an orange, dark orange, almost red color. Just like the palm oil, just without the saturated fat. The next thing we're going to do is roast our cornmeal. A half a cup of a cornmeal goes in here. You're going to roast it for about six minutes while constantly stirring it until you get Tom Brown. Yes, back home we use Tom Brown, which is exactly that, roasted corn. Our roasted corn is ready, and we are ready to combine all of our prepped ingredients. First, pour in all of your mashed 
plantain into your mixing bowl, followed by the Tom Brown or the roasted cornmeal, and the baking powder. Then you also add your salt. And then after you add your salt, you're going to add your marinade or your mixture. Look at how that looks just like palm oil. And then you add your scallions, which you have chopped up finely, including your red bell peppers, and just go ahead and mix it all up till it's beautifully combined. Yes, yeah, so mix it well. And no worries about activating gluten to cause your bread to become tough because you know this is a gluten free vegan vegetarian dish. So mix it well and then it goes into your pan that you will grease first so it doesn't stick. So our pan is ready and it's been greased with our extra virgin coconut oil which is going to give it a really wonderful flavor. Now we're going to pour this in here our oven has been preheating at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now all your mixture goes into your baking pan, which you're going to place in the middle rack of your oven and bake for 80 minutes total. When it's ready, you're going to use a wooden skewer to poke holes throughout the bread. Paint your bread with your extra virgin coconut oil for that extra oomph and to round out all the flavors. Poking the holes will create the pores in which your coconut oil is going to seep through. We've allowed it to cool down, so that's why I can handle it. Um, so we're gonna flip it over onto our serving tray here, and it should come out very easily. And here is a closer look at that. Now the coconut oil is totally optional, but I find it to be that cherry on top. It rounds everything up and it brings that amazing flavor that I don't want you to miss. I think you should totally try it, go for it. And when you cut into it, oh my goodness, it's just delightful. Look at the textures and the colors, just amazing. Our plantain bread is ready guys and it is looking beautiful and it's gonna taste even better than it looks. I would love for you to try this recipe, share it with your friends and your family, and like I always say, if you haven't subscribed, do it now. The red button is for you, so that I can see you again pretty soon when I bring some more goodies your way. Thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you again.